I have already seen in groups people posting about getting rid of all of their animals before this passes. What this is not is fish and wildlife coming to take our pets. What this is, is them stopping us from moving them. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today we are kicking it old school. We are back on my iPhone filming a video that I wasn't really planning on filming, but I was encouraged and asked by a lot of people to make this video and I understand why. The reason why I did not do so on my own accord was because when this bill was first brought to my attention, it was a lot to interpret. It was very hard for me to process, but fortunately the Tarantula Collective shared his video with me. It's a lot easier to digest. So I'm gonna go ahead and link his video down below. Now, when he first released it, I thought, perfect, like I can just direct people to that video because I felt like he explained it really well and I didn't really have much to add. If you hear noises back there, it's just my hamster waking up. Do you guys want to say hi to her? I, I feel like we should say hi to her. This is Iggy. She's my hamster. <laughs> Good morning. Okay, I'm gonna put her back so we can have serious talk. Okay, so back to the topic. So Richard made a video talking about a new legislation that was introduced to the House. It has since passed the House and is now on to the Senate. And it's a bad piece of legislation we wanna talk about. I have my notes over here. So if I am glancing off to the side, it is just to look at them because normally I don't script my videos, but this is a big one and I didn't wanna forget anything. So I really wrote this one out a lot. So I'm sorry, I'm not great at talking about topics like this off the top of my head. So that is why I'm going to be referencing this a lot. This bill is the America Competes Act of 2022. What this bill would do is essentially ban all import of exotic animals into the United States. It also would not allow shipping these animals across state lines any longer. And what's really scary is that even if you move from one state to another, you may not be permitted to bring your pets with you because they can't cross state lines if this bill passes. What exotic animals are we talking about? We're talking about everything from fish to hamsters, snakes, all non-native species of tarantulas, inverts, anything considered exotic would be up on the chopping block. Now they are saying there would be some kind of white list, but what that entails, we don't know. It would be up to them. Something in me says that if this passes and they make a white list, they're not going to sit there and name every <laughs> species of tarantula in the world. So that would definitely severely limit us even if they were trying to be generous by listing the species. But yeah, basically anything that is not a cat or a dog or a farm animal would be possibly banned from import and travel across state lines. Even in the event of moving, you would have to leave them behind. So if this passes, essentially all breeders, vendors, even pet shops, uh, it would severely affect them. I'm guessing they would all end up having to close down. Even when it comes to like local pet shops, it would still affect them because they're getting their shipments from out of state and that wouldn't be allowed anymore. You couldn't ship animals across state lines. I couldn't do unboxings anymore. You know, um, it just, it, it would essentially just like stop all of that, which is not good. So ex ignore my laughter. It's, I don't know why that's my reaction. That's my reaction. Okay, so what I wanna say, <laughs> Um, I know this is scary. I know this is really scary, especially if you have just entered the hobby and you haven't kind of been through this before. Unfortunately, uh, since I've entered the hobby, things have changed. When I did first start keeping tarantulas, Brazilian species were being imported, no problems, no questions asked. Uh, that is not the case anymore. It really depends what fish and wildlife agent is accepting imports and they will tell you different things because it's like a legal gray area. When I first entered the hobby, all pokies, all Sri Lankan, pokies were completely fine to travel across state lines, to be sold across state lines. Unfortunately, that was changed. So now we can no longer ship those species across state lines. Essentially, this law would make everything like that, like, literally everything, any exotic animal. I mean, it's not just inverts we're talking about here. It's scary. I, I get it. But it is not something that we should panic. I, I understand that like I have panicked in the past over legislation like this, but I'm going to tell you now that that does nothing but make it worse. <laughs> I have already seen in groups people posting about getting rid of all of their animals before this passes because they seem to think that for some reason fish and wildlife would come like take everybody's pets. That's not what this is. What this is not is fish and wildlife coming to take our pets. What this is, is them stopping us from moving them across state lines or bringing more into the country. That's what this is. So stay focused on that. That is what this is. This is not the removal of your current pets. So please do not dump them. Do not get rid of all of them. Please like 
don't do that and don't say that's what this is because that's just spreading misinformation and causing panic which does not help us at all nowhere in this bill did it say that they're going to remove your pets so what can we do contact your legislators and tell them that you oppose the Lacey amendments and the america competes act of 2022 that is the best thing that you can do you can write them find them online if you don't know who they are call them write them do whatever you can to let them know that you oppose it and try to include reasoning be respectful and be calm the other thing that you can do is join us arp i am a member i've been a member for i think the past year it's a really great organization that constantly is knocking down scary legislation just like this they have fought and won many cases that protect our rights as hobbyists and animal keepers and honestly i feel like anybody keeping any kind of exotic animal especially reptiles and invertebrates should become a us arc member or at least donate to them because it is kind of like insurance to the hobby when legislation like this happens they're the ones that fight it if this bill were to pass they would be the ones fighting it also they're a really great organization. We're very lucky to have them. So please, if you can contribute to them, I will link the details down below and it would be really great if you could become a member. I think you get a free t-shirt if you do like a certain tier. I got a free t-shirt, so like do that. <laughs> now, another response to all of this that I've seen from pretty much outside the community is people like saying good, like this is a good thing. There are a lot of people that want to shut down the pet industry. And while I do not think that the pet industry is perfect, I don't think it's all bad by any means. I think it's actually very beneficial in a lot of ways but just like I recently made a response criticizing me for keeping tarantulas that whole video where I talked about that and discussed it people like that are the ones that are trying to lobby for bills like this to pass and that is why I responded to it because I think you guys need to know that the hobby is under attack the reptile industry is under attack those people are coming from a place of ignorance they are also basing their opinions off of the minority of keepers that make some kind of irresponsible news headlines. We've all seen them. That is not the majority of us. The majority of us are very passionate and have animals living better lives than they would in the wild. I was just discussing today, there's like seven inches of snow out on the ground. We have a Phonopilma hensi local here and it just baffles me how babied they are in the hobby, how much we baby our tarantulas. Meanwhile, these A hensi are out here under seven inches of snow and they're gonna be fine. <laughs> they are living great lives in captivity, but I mean, people see a small enclosure and they think that it's bad. <laughs> so again, it's coming from a place of ignorance. The truth is we have done a lot of good as exotic pet keepers. Crested geckos at one time were pretty much considered extinct until they hit the reptile hobby. And now they are just like everywhere. <laughs> they are one of the most common reptiles that you can get. My first reptile that I ever had, they thrive in captivity, they're easily bred in captivity, and now they're everywhere. At one time, they were literally thought to be extinct. The species gets to continue to exist. Same with Pislotheria metallica. They are considered critically endangered, but yet here in the hobby, they are thriving in captivity. We are breeding them a ton in captivity. The P. metallica that you are getting were captive bred. They were not taken from the wild. They were born in captivity and they're circulating in the hobby now. Again, critically endangered in their environment, but thriving here in the hobby. Now, those are just a couple examples, but the list goes on. Another counter argument that I have seen are people saying that we should leave these animals where they belong. First of all, a majority of these animals were born in captivity. Maybe they are the descendants of wild caught specimens, but we are not actively like pulling all these animals out of the wild anymore. Well, that's why I push captive breeding so much. That is why I think every hobbyist should dabble in breeding if you have invertebrates. Captive breeding is very important and anybody can do it. Now, when you say to leave them where they belong, where they belong, long is shrinking. Captivity might be their only shot at the species existing long term until we focus on stopping deforestation, protecting their habitats, and reducing the use of fossil fuels. These are things that we should be doing to protect them. They can't exist in their habitats because they are gone. They are going away. Like, I don't think people understand. They have nowhere to go. That is their biggest threat. And furthermore, what is really interesting to me personally is that I keep mostly tarantulas. That is like my main focus. I keep spiders. I have brown recluse, which I mean, fortunately for me, they're local, but it's just really interesting that all of these animals I keep are typically considered pests. They're, they have the stigma. They're considered scary. The pest control industry plays up the fear in people to get your money. They make brown recluse out to be these terrible spiders because they're going to get your money. The pest control industry uses harmful chemicals that not only kills 
spiders and tarantulas and insects, but it also goes on to kill other native wildlife. It's just really misguided to me that these bills are constantly being pushed, trying to limit or get rid of our entire hobby. Meanwhile, we're the ones celebrating the existence of all of these amazing animals while another industry is literally making money off of killing them and peddling these fears that we really don't need to be having of them. I, I just, I, I was scrolling through comments on Richard's TikTok and I just saw like, good, this is what we need, this is great. And I really feel like those same people are the ones that say, kill it with fire when they see a tarantula. It just doesn't make sense. Contact your legislators. I'll put a ton of really important links down below. And do not panic, We're, we got this, we got this.